welcome to CS4510, uh, and this is going to be 9-2, and this is on uh, what's called PCP, not the drug. This is called the post uh, correspondence problem. So this is an example of a problem, very simple definable problem, which is undecidable. And the problem has interest because one, it's quite simple, it's quite easy to describe, but it's undecidable. It has nothing to do with Turing machines, it has nothing to do with language recognition. We have a set of dominoes, like uh, So the set is going to look like this, and each domino is going to have uh, a top and a bottom. So I'll say T1, B1, T2, uh, B2, and this is a finite set, so I'll say a T, uh, K to BK. Uh, And the dominoes consist of strings. So the idea is we want to find a pattern of dominoes such that the top and bottom match. So for example, if we had like the dominoes uh, like A, A, B, and then the domino... Uh, B, A, A, right? So these two dominoes in this sequence would give us the strings on the top A, B, A over A, B, A. And then those two strings are equal. So this was, it's a very simple problem, but it's an interesting one in the sense that there is no general algorithm to determine if uh, given any set of dominoes, if there will always be a match or not. There are some subproblems of this, which are decidable. For example, if you know for a fact that for each domino, uh, if you consider it like this, uh, for each, uh, if ti is strictly uh, greater than bi, excuse me, the lengths of these, then the top is going to increase faster than the bottom. The bottom can never catch up. So then you know that there can never be a match, for example. Also, if it's unary. If it's unary, it's also decidable. Uh, I won't get into that, but this is a sort of a general problem. So you're given a set of dominoes, and we're asking you to prove, uh, we're asking you to find a match. So you're allowed repetition, you're allowed to repeat things many times, but there has to be a sequence, which is finite, of these dominoes copied, such the top and bottom strings lay out to be equal. The question is, does this set of dominoes have a match? And... Uh, that's undecidable. So what we're actually going to do, we're going to reduce to ATM uh, with several tricks. So what we're going to do is basically trick the algorithm for whatever would uh, do this. We're going to trick it into simulating M on W to decide ATM. So first, the language. Uh, the language PCP is what? It's going to be an instance of a problem P, a set of dominoes such that P has a match. Again, as I said, nothing to do with Turing machines here. Just a simple mathematical question. So what we're going to do is on input M and W, we're going to trick, we're going to create an instance of a set of dominoes such that in accepting configuration uh, to reduce to ATM, what we're going to do is on input uh, M and W, we're going to construct a very specific set of dominoes which can have a match only if M accepts W. And we're going to use the reduction to accepting computation histories. So we're going to, the, the string on the top and the bottom is going to be an accepting computation history of M on W. First, as an aside, uh, we consider the problem MPCP. This is uh, 
a set of dominoes which such that P has a match with the first domino starting. So basically what this means is our set of dominoes, uh, whatever we denote as T1, B1, that would be the start of the of the uh, match. So consider the notation uh, dot u to equal, uh, and I'm using dots, but sip series is star. So it starts with the u1 dot u2 dot u3 dot 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 uh, dot un, where u is equal to u1 dot 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 to un. So basically, we're interleaving it with dots at, in the beginning. Then uh, u, u dot is going to be equal to it at the end. So u1 dot, u2 dot, u3 dot, 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 uh, dot, u4, ooh, un dot. And then, uh, obviously, uh, dot u dot is going to equal to dot u1 dot, 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 dot. I'm just going to be quick here, un dot. So if we have a set like, uh, so if we have a set uh, like uh, T1, B1, T, uh, T2, B2, uh, T, K, uh, B, K. Consider the following uh, other set of dominoes, which is going to be uh, dot t1 dot b1 dot. Then we're going to follow that by uh, dot t2 b2 dot on this side, right? Dot dot dot. And then here we're going to go to dot t k uh, b k dot and then we have this extra space domino here which is going to be dot and then Sipser uses a diamond I guess I'll use a square because I just tried to draw a diamond and I failed and then there's a diamond on the bottom so basically as these dots uh, we're trying suppose we're trying to build a string uh, from arranging these dominoes the only way this set could possibly have a match is if the first one was picked first. Because none of these other ones start with the same symbol, right? So dot u is going to start with the dot, and then u dot is going to start with u1. So none of these are going to start with a dot, except for t1, uh, b1. So if we can prove that mpcp is undecidable, with this simple transformation, that would also prove that pcp is undecidable. So it's okay that we can make this assumption that we can control the first domino in MPCP, right? So that's one of the small uh, errors out the way. All right, let's describe uh, this construction. So um, how to make, and I'll call it P prime from a Turing machine M and its input W. Set uh, T1, uh, b1 equal to this it's going to be the top is going to be just the the pound sign and then the bot is going to be the pound sign followed by the initial configuration which is q0 w1 w2 dot 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 to wn all right so this is our first domino right we want recall we want the uh, top and bottom to be an accepting computation history and we want this, this will only be true if M accepts W. So what we're going to do is construct the tiles based off the transition function for M. And then as M, M is going to start with, excuse me, the, the PCP tile is going to start with this one first. And then it, it's going to have to try and fill in the rest of these. And as it does so, we're going to add the next uh, thing in the computation history. And it can only generate them according to the transition function of M. So it's going to, we're basically tricking 
this assumed solver for PCP to simulate M on W, which we know it is 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 not possible. So so step one is we're gonna set T one B one to the initial configuration on the bottom, and then oh, actually this would be a pound sign here. And step two, we're going to simulate the left and the right moves, right? So if uh, if we have a transition of the form like uh, A, B, which is in gamma, so those are going to be something on the tape, uh, and we have QI and Q, QJ as some states, we're going from QI to QJ uh, in Q. And let's say we had a transition of the form like uh so we're at state qi we read an a off the tape and we move to we we move to qj we write b and we move right so if we have this of the form uh we're going to add tile uh which is going to be i'll just call it ti uh bi it's going to be like a Q I A over uh, B Q J. Now you may notice this is kind of like the proof we did for unrestricted grammars being turned complete. We did put the configurations onto uh, unrestricted grammar in a similar way. And then similarly, uh, oh, also uh, Q I does not equal uh, Q reject here. It's just some baggage. Three, if uh, a comma b comma c is in uh, gamma q i that's q j q i q j these are two states. We're going from q i to q j, and we're moving left this time. So we're at state q i. We read an a, and we go to state that looks like a j. We're at QI, go to A, excuse me, we read A, we move to state QJ, uh, write the B, and then we move left. We're going to put, uh, we're going to add tile, so we're going to TI, uh, BI, and this is going to be, uh, so C, Q, QI, A, so we're going to read this A, Write the B and then move left. So what that's going to give us is uh, Q, J, uh, C, B. Okay, that's step three. Step four, call their seven steps. And then uh, for all A in gamma, we're going to add tile. Uh, a a basically this is just to help uh with padding step five and we're going to add uh tiles uh this is just sort of for baggage at this point we're going to add hash hash and we're going to add uh hash and then a blank hash so what this allows us to do is perhaps the configuration has some number of spaces at the end of it. You know, if you recall on the Turing machine tape, there's the input. And then if you go past the input, uh, there's just going to be so many blanks, right? So this allows that in, in case the configuration has that. Step six, we're going to add the tiles. This is, again, just baggage. This is going to be uh, for all A... In uh, gamma, we're going to add the tiles A, Q, A. So this is the accept state. And then Q, A. Or. Uh, well, not or. And. Q, A, A, Q, A. So basically, at the end of a computation, for some reason, the Turing machine might move left and right some for some reason at the end before halting who knows why but it's possible that the turing machine without this step 
a Turing machine might accept it and then our construction wouldn't be correct because it might do these extra steps for some reason. So this is, we have to account for this in the thing. Step seven is finally of the form like uh, add uh, tile. This is the finisher, you know, the suplex here is we add the tile uh, QA uh, double hash and then a single hash. Right, like this. So this has to be uh, the tile at the end. Let me give you an example. Now, I'm going to argue why this construction is correct by example. And uh, what I'm going to do is write the computation history uh, from some Turing machine, turn it into a set of dominoes, and then hopefully that should make the picture uh, quite clear. Okay, suppose our Turing machine had like, uh, if we're at the initial state and we read a 1, Let's just say that we write, we move to Q1, we're going to write a zero, and we're just going to move right as an example. Now suppose our initial configuration, suppose that uh, C0 is equal to Q0, I don't know, 101, right? Now let's consider what the possible assumed to the contrary to exist solver for PCP would uh, do. So the first domino is going to be T1, B1, obviously. So it's going to put a pound here, and then it's going to put pound uh, Q0, uh, 101 pound, right? Now, uh, because this rule exists, there is a domino in our uh, set that's something like uh, if we're at Q0 and we read a 1, we can write a 0 and move right, right? So it's going to read Q01, and it's going to think, okay, I need a tile that has Q01. There's going to be, of course, because it's the transition. There's a tile for each definition of the transition function. It's going to be there's going to be like a Q00, but this is going to be the only tile that should start with Q01, right? So it's going to choose that tile, uh, Q01, uh, zero, uh, zero Q1. So currently our strings are what? It's going to be hash q01 and the bottom is going to be hash q0101 uh, hash 0q1 so what we've essentially done so far then it's of course the to the dominoes you know 00 whatever are going to uh, exist right so so as the machine hat is forced to choose dominoes to complete the top it's accidentally extending the bottom according to the simulation of m on w right so if we were to repeat this uh for some some time we would have like uh, eventually we would have hash c0 hash dot 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 hash some intermediary let's say ci and this is as we're producing then at the bottom we're going to have hash c0 hash dot 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 hash uh, CI and then because of the way this has worked this is going to be uh, CI uh, plus one so then the machine is going to say okay I'm trying to now I'm trying to match to this to CI plus one it's going to read these and then as it's doing those it's going to produce these which is going to be the next configuration right and the configurations here are correct they CI will always yield I plus one because the way the tiles are defined are from the transition function of M Here's the final uh, reduction then. On input uh, m comma w construct uh, p prime, which is as defined uh, from uh, m and w. So that's going to be uh, exactly these seven steps here. Then we're going to construct a P from P prime, right? So recall P prime, uh, P from P prime is this step here where we're going to interleave uh, these star symbols in between it. So the actual simulation will end up happening uh, between the even characters, right? So this is just so we can force the first tile to be the starting configuration.
So if uh, P is in PCP, and recall this means that PCP is decidable, so that means that uh, P has a match, but P has a match, the match string could only be an accepting configuration of M on W, which we know can only exist if M accepts W. So if, PC, if P is in PCP, then M accepts W, so we accept. Else, we reject. That is the proof, then, that PCP is an unsolvable problem. There is no algorithm which will take in a set of dominoes and will always tell you if there's a match or not for any set of dominoes. Okay, from here begins a history of trying to settle a lot of open problems that were plaguing mathematics for a very long time. There was a problem called... Uh, it was, so David Hilbert, again, this guy's going to show up more often. He proposed a list of unsolved problems at the turn of the century in the year 1900. And he said, you know, can you solve some of these? So uh, Turing and Alonzo Church solved the Anunstadunch problem, the Hilbert's decision problem. This is called uh, Hilbert's 10th uh, problem, and it's sort of in the same vein. He would personally be unsatisfied with the answer. So the question asks, is uh, there an algorithm to uh, decide if uh, Diophantine equation has uh, integer solutions. So what is a Diophantine equation? It's just a polynomial over x, y, z, w's, whatever. There's no exponents allowed, but you can do things like a 3x squared plus x, y, z minus uh, y cubed is equal to zero or something. All right, so does this have uh, an integer solution? Can you choose x, y, and z to be positive or negative integers such that this will satisfy? Or things like, uh, you know, there's awesome obvious ones like x squared uh, minus 1 uh, equals 0. This obviously has no uh, integer solutions, right? What If you were to solve for that, you get the square root of 2, which we know is not, in, it's not an integer. Um. So it took some 20-something years, and I think in the 70s this is uh, proved by uh, four scientists, three of them Americans. They proved that, you know, if there was such a sequence in something else, then Hilbert's 10th problem would be undecidable. And then this other guy from Russia, he was like, oh, I found such a sequence. Uh, it's the Fibonacci numbers. It's more complicated than that. I'm paraphrasing, you know, decades of work, but... Then they proved that Hilbert's 10th problem was undecidable. So this is an, a good example of another good example of an undecidable problem, which is not has nothing to do with Turing machines, or nothing to do with language theory, but it is undecidable. What I like about undecidable problems is they show up in the worst places, and they let you once you can prove something is undecidable, that means you have to you can stop doing work. So some other examples of things which are undecidable is like uh, in you know Magic the Gathering. This is like a card game for nerds. Uh, if one player has an advantage or not, if one player has advantage or not. So that's also another example of uh, something that's undecidable. You can never determine, you cannot compute if, uh, if a player has a winning strategy. Okay, so next time I'm going to talk about uh, what's called Rice's Theorem, which is it proves that most properties of Turing machines are actually undecidable. So we're going to go back to language theory from talk, we're just separating from it just now. Oh yeah, one last thing, quick biography of the author. This is a problem studied by Emil Post. Emil Post was a historically unlucky man. He came up with uh, Godel and completeness, but didn't really prove it as well. He was spending some time on it, and then Godel beat him to, press, beat him to the press. I'll talk about Godel and completeness uh, later on in the semester. Then... He came up with a definition of Turing machines, which was very different, but they were equivalent, and he actually refined Turing's definition of Turing machines from a 5-tuple to a 4-tuple, And uh, but he didn't come up with the solution to Hilbert's uh, decision problem first. He was beaten in that, and then there was several other cases where he came up with a solution to a problem, and then he no one cared because it was already solved at that point.
then he was like a high school teacher and then he was a professor and then he had depression and back then to treat you with depression they would like electrocute you so one day he just got electrocuted to death because he had depression something like that so he's dead oh he also didn't have a left arm that's kind of interesting so interesting guy